Oh, yeah. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever it is you're in the world. And welcome to the third week of Harmonize to Energize. My name is Terry Matthews. I work here in Scottsdale at the Jinshin Jitsu International Headquarters, where I practice the art of Jinshin, and I also teach self-help and manage the office when I remember. So I hope you're all doing well. I hope you've had a good week. Um, for new people, welcome, welcome. We've discussed in previous weeks, which are available as replays, by the way, on our, our YouTube page, we discussed the principle that Jin Shin Jitsu being an art <coughs> of balancing life energy in the body, we move through different frequencies or bandwidths of energy to bring that energy from head to toe and from toe to head. And interplayed with that, we mentioned these little resistors on our body that help um, control that, the safety energy locks. We talked about them being 26 of them. And <coughs> we connected that with a principle of breathing called the 36 breaths, which Mary Burmeister taught, so that we could experience that descent of energy from a subtler realm to a denser realm and see what effect it has on our body. We used safety energy locks four at the back of the head, safety energy lock 15 in the groin, and safety energy lock seven, the big toe, to demonstrate that principle of head to toe and toe to head. And by the way, did you know that 4, 15, and 7 just happen to add up to 26, which is the number of safety energy locks left and right of the body, and it means all complete. So we started really at the beginning of the end of the direction where energy wants to go, down the front, up the back. And then we stepped back a little bit last week, and we talked about the fuel for that energy where it's stored in the body, in the spine, the main central. And we talked about how we can use our hands to go down the different positions of the main central. I just want to add before we develop the theme for this week is that um, although generally speaking, Mary would hold the hands and, and wait until receiving a pulse here and here or here and here, wherever you were placing your hands, there are approaches which one of our other teachers, Sadaki Kato, the son of Haruki Kato, has used and um, may continue to use to activate um, safety energy locks, which are a lot quicker than what you perhaps are used to. So literally you can place your hand on the head or on safety energy lock four, whatever was more comfortable, and he would do this. He would just touch and touch and touch. So why I'm introducing that idea is be flexible with yourself. Um, you may have all kinds of reasons time-wise why you can't complete um, the program and maybe doing the main central or maybe that's a good way for you to begin to make the connection. Later on, you may want to stay longer on each safety energy lock or each area of the, the main central, the middle safety energy locks. So I wanted to give you that thought as well so that you don't get caught up in well you know i must do it this way and i mustn't do it that way i also want to say that sometimes the head is clearer and we could actually start here mary would say you know you could begin by placing the right hand here and move the left hand down that way or sometimes the head isn't clear and that will pull the energy down so improvise be your own testimony you are the artist mary would talk about you have the palette. She gave all the tools in her self-help books and later on in her textbook one and two and more advanced classes. So become the artist and play. So <clears throat> this week, I want to share with you my understanding of the next part of the journey, although all of these energies intermingle and all their processes happen simultaneously. But when we talk about reaching our journey from head to toe and then from toe to head, we talked about the main central fueling that. There's a little more of a process that goes on in between before we get that flow really moving head to toe. And that 
is known as um, the left and right supervisor. The four, the 15 <clears throat> and the seven could be said to be part of that um, supervisor. We combined the two. We combined the energy moving down the left side of the body and the energy moving down the right side of the body to complete that journey from head to toe and toe to head. Well, <clears throat> in effect, what Mary taught was that as the energy is moving down the front um, from the head to the coccyx and back again in the main central, at a certain point it subdivides just <clears throat> between the umbilicus and the 15 and starts forming the left side of the body. And it moves down to safety energy lock one, the prime mover, moves down to all the other safety energy locks around that um, big toe number seven, and then up the back of the body and all the way up the back to <clears throat> the three and then back down again over the body. And it does that several times before it, in fact, crosses over. After about three revolutions, it crosses over. It's called the weaving princess. The energy moves from the left to the right via that right four, and then it goes down the front of the right leg and up the back of the left leg. So you basically have a figure of eight down the front <clears> of <throat> the left, up the back, crossing over to the right and then up the back, and then from the right back down to the left, crossing over that four. That is known as the supervisor, and that monitors, if you like, um, the formation and the harmony of left and right sides of our body. Now, <clears throat> often during life, lifestyle, whether all kinds of activities can affect the growth and establishment and harmony of the energies left and right, up and down. And in the body, we find that there is an energy pathway called the mediator, which brings together those disparate movements we may make from left to right of our center. The main center, you remember, keeps us centered. If we move away, from our center left or right, and we become too left or too right, we need something to bring us back to center. And Mary called that the diagonal universal harmonizing mediator or the diagonal mediator for short. And that crisscrosses the body like a lattice work. It's um, often called the binder. And it begins at safety energy lock number three here at the left moves around the left side of the body, the left little finger goes around the right thumb, across here under the shoulder girdle, wends its way round the back of the body here, the kidney area, the 23, moves itself round to the left side of the body, and instead of going down the inside of the body where the one is, it moves down the left outer side of the leg <clears throat> and then moves back around, <clears throat> up the body, meets that safety energy lock number one where the supervisor is, moves itself all the way back up the body, cross, crossing up to the right side, and then the right side goes across the body. It isn't my remit to teach you all the different flows. This is textbook one and textbook two material, but I want you to get the idea that we have a main central we have a subdivision left and right <clears throat> to monitor the harmony of our left and right sides of our body with our main center. And if we move too much in one direction in our life, too much the other direction, we have a mediator that crisscrosses the body to bring it back home to center. And <clears throat> interestingly enough, some of you may have seen Anita Willoughby's we are one webinar this week where she was discussing the mediator and she's actually going to go into that in even greater depth over a couple of days um, on a webinar, which some of you may know about on June the 27th and 28th. This will be an online webinar. If you need more information, I believe an email was sent, but we can send you or I can send you an email where you might want to sign up to that. So <clears throat> this is a, a mediator kind of week and we're talking about harmonizing left with right back to the center through this crisscrossing mediation 
And <clears throat> the exercises that Mary or the flows that Mary showed in self-help book um, one are on page 18, 19 and 20 in self-help book one. I had some wonderful slides, but Ali and I couldn't get them to behave. So I'm going to have to demonstrate to you um, on myself exactly how we're going to practice the mediator. And we're going to use principles we're familiar with. We're actually going to, of course, use the 36 breaths. And we're also going to use this mudra, which we started with on um, the first week. If you remember that, the thumb over the ring finger, the nail of the ring finger, left and right. And <clears throat> as I mentioned earlier, the mediator begins its journey on safety energy lock three. So what I like to do before I start doing a self-help mediator is I like to check which side of my body maybe needs that help first. So in other words, I'm going to check my safety energy lock three, which, by the way, is the door to understanding um, antibiotic. Uh, very important right now for us when we're challenged by COVID-19 to keep this open. So check yourself now which of your safety energy lock threes seem to be tighter, fuller. That could well be the safety energy lock three that you need to begin to harmonize. And how we're going to do this is we'll do nine breaths um, <clears throat> for each side of the body times four, and that'll look like 18 breaths with the left self-help mediator and 18 with um, the right. But you choose whether you start on the left self-help mediator or the right. So I'm going to now help you, if you haven't got self-help book one, to show you how we're going to do this with the body. The right hand's going to go over for the left um, side mediator. The right hand's going to go over left number three. Just hang it over like um, a coat hanger. The, the left hand, the thumb, and the left ring finger are going to hold together. And if you're agile enough, you're going to bring your right foot, the instep, which is actually safety energy lock number six. I don't know, you probably might not be able to see this, onto left safety energy lock number one, okay? Easier is probably for most people just to bring both your knees together, touch your knees, and that will connect safety energy lock one left and right and the left side mediator with the right side mediator. So here we have it, <clears throat> self-help. Now, if you're going to start on the right, same principle, but this time the left hand is going to find the right Safety energy lock number three. And the right hand is going to hold this mudra. Again, the thumb over the ring finger. And this time the left leg is going to go to the right leg. And for those of you who are familiar, again, this is known as the tree in yoga. But again, for most people, it may be simpler just to place both of your knees together. Okay. So um, safety energy lock number three is interesting. It works with that safety energy lock number 15. And as one is more open, the other is more open. And if you remember um, week one, when we were holding this mudra, we placed our hands in safety energy lock 15 in the groin so that we could get that movement for 15 and 7. Well, in the illustrations, Mary shows from page 18 through 19, 20 in self-help book one. She actually shows it with a hand out there. That's perfectly fine. And all I'm going to suggest is if it's more comfortable for you when you're doing this, why not place it in the 15? Because I've just told you <laughs> the 15 will assist the opening of the three, and the three is the harmonizing safety energy lock that activates that mediator. So don't feel too hidebound. Be begin to realize as you experiment that you are the artist. 
and you can work out what may be also efficient and effective for you once you expand that experience and that knowledge. So <clears throat> anyway, enough already. I'm going to begin on my left, <clears throat> safety engine lock number three. I'm holding my left ring finger and thumb, and I can hold my fingers out here, but I will actually, in this case, hold my <clears throat> hand in my groin, and I'm going to bring both my knees together, both of them together, and we're going to do two sets of nine breaths, whichever side you've chosen. And remember, we're going to pause in between to connect with the space, the nothingness, where the transformation begins. And then we're going to swap sides, whichever side it was for you, and do another set of two sets of 19, uh, nine. sorry, And we'll complete the 36 breaths. So I want to remind you that maybe my metabolic rate is slightly slower than yours. So go at your own speed. I will go at mine. Just relax into the body and remember the recipe that Mary gave in self-help book two. We're looking to drop our shoulders, exhale. Allow the shoulders to sink into the feet. We're moving that energy from the four through the 15 to the seven to the feet. So it's a, a sinking, allow as we exhale. And as we inhale, just receive the breath we're receiving. All right. In your own time, I suggest it might be easier if you close your eyes while you're doing this to block out too much other sensory interference. So let's begin. Two sets of nine left or right. Here we go. For the new people, one breath is one exhalation plus an inhalation. So as I receive the breath, after my exhale, that is one complete breath from head to toe, toe to head. And we'll do it eight more times to get the ninth. And when you complete that first cycle of nine exhalation inhalations, just go into neutral, into that space, which Mary called the ninth depth. Or familiarize yourself with how you feel 
and you've paused after that uh, cycle. Just be the observer, no judgments, and sense of where your energy might be. Remember, we're moving our energy overall head to toe, toe to head. And we're just using a different pathway, crisscrossing the body. Feel the peace, the no thing, the being. This is a great space to be, where I believe we're all heading on our journey. So now we move into the second set of nine. Same side, I suggest, that you chose. And again, exhaling, dropping shoulders, sinking into the feet and letting the breath guide you down, 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 down. And then receiving the breath. Nine times in total. As you complete the second cycle of nine, so that's 18 exhalation inhalations. Again, just pause. Just become an observer, a witness to where you're at right now. Observe maybe what you're thinking. But importantly, what you're feeling and where maybe you're feeling. Where in your body? Now we're going to swap sides. Whichever side you were on, go to the other side. So <clears throat> if you're on the left, you're now going to move your left hand to your right. Safe change your lock number three, and you're going to hold that mudra, that finger position, thumb and index ring. <clears throat> on the right, and bring your two knees together, or if you're very athletic, you're going to be doing that yoga tree. And we begin the same process, exhalation, inhalation, nine times, pause, another nine times to complete 36 breaths. Here we go. You're allowing light to enter your body, to move through energy pathways, right down to the cellular level. The cells are exhaling and inhaling too. And this movement is progression from head to toe, toe to head, through the mediator crisscrossing the body. 
the binder. So when you're ready, we do the final set of uh, nine exhalation inhalations on whatever side you are, left or right. Begin. Sinking down, 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 allowing the energy to move through any obstacles best it can. Receive new breath, cosmic purified energy moving up the back. So, after you complete that final cycle of nine exhalation inhalations, you have completed a 36 breath cycle. Don't worry if you didn't complete it during this time. Go away and practice. Your practice will help you progress, open up the pathway of the mediator more and more. And importantly, the mediator was a flow that um, I remember learning that when no other flow was helping us harmonize in our body, look to the mediator. It's bringing our left and right together back to our center. And importantly, being the water element, it's governing all those chemical pathways in the body, the lymph system, the blood. We're pretty much from birth 99% water, and then later on um, it reduces down to about 70%. And as Anita pointed out in her We Are One, the Hidden Messages in Water, the book by Matsuru Emoto, <clears throat> he discovered that water, frozen water, is affected by the kinds of thoughts and feelings we have. And he demonstrated that if we uh, <clears throat> had a negative thought uh, or wrote a negative thought on paper near um, water, the crystallized frozen form would actually show a very negative, unharmonious um, shape, whereas if you placed a positive thought, you would get this beautiful crystalline image. So with mediation, we're looking at our overall attitude. How do we approach our life? Is it looking for the harmony? Or are we getting stuck in different emotional responses? We're going to go into all those different responses as we progress with Harmonize to Energize. But we've now got the foundation, the groundwork of how energy, universal harmonizing energy, steps itself down into our body, is stored in our spine, creates our left and right sides of our body, is harmonized through our mediator. And now we can look at some of the ways we can harmonize any of the disharmonies that affect us in our life, and we find that principally some of the biggest disharmonizers are our thoughts, what we are thinking. And when they crystallize down, they become attitudes, and that, that takes a little longer to shift. But we're fortunate. We have many ways of harmonizing, so I'm going to look forward to sharing that with you in uh, future weeks. And again, those of you that haven't, you might want to purchase the self-help books. I've put a little link up there, self-help book one we've been working with today, the self-help book two here, and self-help book three. 
and you can get them from our store. And over the weeks to come, we'll be working steadily and progressively through those books. And one more little shout out for Anita. Anita will be doing this online class June 27th and 28th, um, 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. New York time. And you can sign up for that. It's an online class, and she's going to be spending two days in depth on the diagonal mediator. I know in the We Are One, I learned um, an incredible amount. It was a lot of wisdom shared by Anita, and I'm sure um, it'll be worth your while. Take a look. We'll send you the link if you haven't got it. And thank you, thank you, thank you for sharing with me in this process of harmonizing to energize. And practice. Practice will help you progress and see how it is for you. Become your own artist. Become your testimony. Thank you. Have a wonderful rest of the day, rest of the week, and see you next Thursday. Same time, same place.